Hey there, it's Kelly at Zinni Me. I am one of the coaches and private practice experts to help therapists build, grow, and scale their practices in ways that they love that provide great outcomes for their clients. We got a question recently sent in, and I thought it'd make a good opportunity to chat about this common question um, about caseload size. How many clients should you plan to see in your private practice? And the answer is never going to be concrete with us <laughs> because it really does depend. When you come from agency work, nonprofit work, I don't know about you, but caseload sizes are astronomical, right? I remember supervising a team, they would have a hundred clients on their caseload. You know, you can't do that in private practice. The work is totally different. However, you also have additional work when you own a private practice that you don't have when you're employed. You're running a business, there's administrative stuff, there's visioning stuff, there's marketing stuff, and networking, and all those things that are also included in this work that influence the caseload size. So I just wanna take you through a quick process to start to think through what is the right caseload size for you. You first wanna determine globally how much time you can commit to your private practice. Everyone's in different circumstances. You might be bridging the gap and leaving another agency job or something like that. Maybe you only have 15 hours. Or maybe you're ready to dive in full time and you can give it 30 hours. Everyone is different. This is why we cannot compare caseload sizes to other clinicians at all. We need to look at globally, what can I commit to this business? Now, let's say you come out to 30 hours. I can work 30 hours on my business. Well, we're not gonna fill all that time with clients. Why? Because you're gonna have administrative costs and time, and you're gonna have marketing time that you need to spend. And usually, I like to say, if you, you are in the beginning of your practice, you're gonna be spending a lot more time on that marketing. If you've moved into um, scaling your practice like it's full, but you're keeping it going, that will end up being a smaller amount than when you start. And if you have a group practice, what I often find is my group practice owners are scaling back clinically what they're doing because the admin time has gone up a lot more because they're stepping into more of a leadership role. So in addition to knowing how much time that you have to give to the business, then you wanna look at where am I at in my phase of practice? And knowing that part of this time needs to go to admin, part of it needs to go to leadership if you're in a group practice, Part of it needs to go to marketing. You also need time for creative vision stuff where you're working on planning and laying out projects and how you're gonna grow the practice. And then you still have the clinical work. So for example, sometimes I will suggest at least three hours of marketing a week. If you're beginning, it's gonna be more, but sort of that maintenance phase can be when you get into maintenance, it can be about one hour a week, depending on how much you outsource and you have locked into some solid processes. And when you're in a group, you're gonna have a lot more admin time as the leader. That's gonna account for three to five hours a week. That's just a rough estimate in general broad terms. So it really depends on how much you can give to the practice and then you wanna divide out, well, I need time for marketing, time for admin, and when you're starting, that takes a little bit more and you'll get a sense of what percentage you need to kind of spread out the different kinds of ways that you work in your practice. So then once you, you kind of know your phase of practice and the things that you're needing, I want you to also understand if you're a person who started out and you spend a lot more time in marketing, now things are getting stabilized. With each time you transition your practice, up level it, so to speak, you're gonna to wanna to also adjust and you may have to change your caseload size. So what caseload size you start with today is not the caseload size that you may have a year from now or even five years from now. It ebbs and flows based on your ability to serve clients with equity, right? So that brings us to the third point. Every client should get the same level of care that your first session to your last session of the day the first session of the week to the last session of the week, they get the same energy and engagement and thought put into the work from you. Because 
We don't want to burn ourselves out. We want to provide great clinical outcomes for our clients. And we want to know that we can provide the consistency over time. This is about creating a sustainable business, right? Not just doing something because I have to um, pack it all in. So suspend your judgment for a moment and tap into what can your body really handle? Now, you may have been able to handle a lot more when you worked for somebody, but again, they were providing a lot of the structure and all you did was show up and saw the clients. However, that's not the case now. So you're gonna be having more work that you have to do. So tap into your body. With the pandemic and everything, our bodies are different. How we're handling stress is different and what we, our capacity has changed. And just like we teach our clients to listen to that wisdom of the physical self as much as we do the emotional and spiritual self, you need to really tap into what has changed over the past year, what feels good to me. Some therapists do great in the morning. Some therapists do great in the evenings. You know, when do we do our best work? And that is when we want to see our clients and give them our best. So you also, in addition to understanding what you can do and what your body can do to provide equal care to all the clients, you also want to check in with what are the right clients for your level of energy. Because, for example, if you see teens, that teen is not just your client, right? The parents are also your client. It requires a little bit more coordination. If you work in eating disorders, for example, you may be coordinating with dietitians, psychiatrists, other kinds of programs. Couples work, different level. Maybe you're doing longer sessions and maybe you do intensives or group therapy. So also kind of tuning into, I love working with couples, but I can only work with a few and the rest need to be individual. Or I do a lot of trauma work, but that work is really intensive. So if I'm doing a lot of trauma work, I can only really manage to see maybe five, six clients a week. This is really important to understand and it's not any judgment on any of us. Some people, for example, that are doing EMDR brain spotting, they, they can pack that stuff in, no problem, and other people feel that they need more space, it takes them more time, and this is about knowing yourself as a clinician and what works for you. So the answers to a lot of things in your business require you to tap into your wisdom and knowing what kind of business you can do do it well, provide equal treatment, and still take care of yourself so that you don't burn out. So then from there, you can evaluate what the caseload size should be. Now, maybe you're watching this right now and you have a caseload size, it's a good time to evaluate. Is this working for me? Are there sessions I show up and I'm just really exhausted and I wish it was over? <laughs> And if you start seeing some patterns, then it's time to change the caseload. Now, many people think, oh, when I start my practice or when I'm growing my practice, I pick my fee, then I figure out how much money I need to make, and then that tells me my caseload size. We're reversing that. You have to figure out what kind of business fits into your life, how many clients can you see and see them well while still being whole and healthy as a human being, and then from there, once you have that number, then you can figure out how much money do I need to make and what the fee should be tied to that. Too often, we want we put the expectations of oppressive systems and past um, experiences and employee situations, and we put that into our business. And that is how burnout starts because we are expecting ourselves to be able to see the same amount of clients that we saw when we worked at an agency or a nonprofit. And it was unreasonable then, and it's still unreasonable now. <laughs> so this is a good time to evaluate what we want to change and to suspend judgment. Whatever so-and-so's caseload size is, as long as it works for them, good on them. It does not mean anything about you. The goal here is to honor your path as a therapist for you to do the work well and to be able to hold your head up high knowing that you provide such good outcomes in your work 
and that you've done it in a way that sustains you so that you can have income and also enjoyment, right? It's not just to, it's also about enjoying this work. So 20 is not a magic number. 30 is not a magic number. It really, really does depend on these factors about your phase in your practice, how much time you have to give it, who you see, what it does for you energetically, and how much energy you have to give so that equity is present amongst your treatment for clients. So if you're now wondering, okay, well then how does that impact my fee? What if I discover I can only see two clients a day? All right, then let's figure out what the fee is in order for you to sustain income. And then if you get to the place where you realize, I can't see the right amount of clients at the fee that is expected of me to charge and <clears throat> sustain the business, then we look at what are some other ways to provide services that allow you to make that income, provide great outcomes for clients, right? So this is always the starting point. Even if you're in group practice, you wanna come back to this again. How are you doing as a leader? Can you keep seeing the caseload size that you are and fulfill all your other roles? What needs to shift? And then if you find, wow, the business still relies on me a lot to have a caseload, well, what can we shift within the business so that you aren't the bottleneck and that this business can be sustained, all right? So we have a free training. If you wanna check it out, it's available for one CE as well on how to set your fees from this model based on the right amount of clients for you. You can check that out anytime and watch it anytime. If you know your caseload size, I'd love to see like what you guys have decided in terms of what is the right fit for you. Go ahead and post, share this, like, subscribe, wherever you are, whatever we do here on this platform. <laughs> I encourage you to engage here because it's important that we support each other in being healthier and more balanced as therapists because we're in it for the long haul, right? And things are gonna get more intense this year as more and more mental health issues come to the rise. And we wanna be able to know what our boundaries are and what our capacity is to do, to provide mental health services in a healthy way for our clients and for ourselves. Thank you for being here. I'll probably pop in maybe next week, but if not, I hope to see you in our community. Check out the free training and have a wonderful Thursday. Bye.